Hey there everybody, it's Chloe in Japan and today I'm here at Hiroshima, Japan at the Peace Memorial Park. This park houses a museum and monuments all dedicated to remind us of the event that happened on August 6th of 1945 at 815. On that day, Hiroshima was hit by the first ever atomic bomb causing the city to be completely destroyed. Many people died that first day, but by the end of the year, over 140,000 people had passed away. This is a very different kind of video, and I definitely encourage you to watch till the end because this place really touched me, and the experience that these people went through is just something that I felt I needed to share in order to spread how important peace really is. Tickets for the museum are about $1 to $2, and for an extra $2, you can get a guided audio tour. With your ticket, you get a postcard made out of recycled paper cranes from the museum. A single atomic bomb indiscriminately killed tens of thousands of people, profoundly disrupting and altering the lives of survivors. Through belongings left by the victims, A-bombed artifacts, testimonies of A-bomb survivors, and related materials, the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum conveys the world of horrors and the inhumane nature of nuclear weapons and spreads the message of no more Hiroshimas. So the first part of the exhibit really talks about the development of the A-bomb and goes into the science of creating the atomic bomb. The next part of the exhibit is about why the U.S. chose Hiroshima for the bombing. It was located in the valley so they knew that the A-bomb would cause total destruction, therefore ending the war. The next part of the exhibit talks about the explosion itself and the effects of the heat. It melted glass, destroyed buildings, and even burned the patterns of people's clothing into their skin. The exhibit then talks about the effects of radiation on the human body. People who survived the initial A-bomb attack still suffered from exposure to radiation years later. After learning about the technology of the atomic bomb, other countries began experimenting and creating their own nuclear weapons. This next part talks about how after countries developed the technology and began to test nuclear weapons, they saw the negative effects on both people and the environment. 
The final part of the exhibit talks about how after seeing the damages of the atomic bombs, countries came together to sign treaties to avoid using nuclear weapons in the future. On August 6, 1947, Hiroshima City delivered its first peace declaration. Ever since, the city has been telling the world about the reality of the A-bomb damage and calling for lasting world peace. Nuclear weapons and humankind cannot coexist indefinitely. Today more than ever, we must all embrace the A-bomb survivors' desire to ensure that no one else will suffer their pain and sorrow. We must inherit their determination and pass it on to future generations. This next exhibit uses real artifacts to tell the stories of people who suffered from the A-bomb attack. This uniform is the belongings of three junior high students who were killed during the A-bomb attack. This tricycle was the favorite toy of a little boy who sadly lost his life due to the bombing. The dress on the end belonged to a 24-year-old woman named Nobleway. She was trapped underneath her collapsed house but was able to crawl out and make it to the evacuation site. Unfortunately, she lost her life 12 days later. Also in the exhibit is pieces of art depicting events that happened that day. This next part of the exhibit focuses on the story of a girl named Sadako Sasaki. She was a girl that was exposed to the A-bomb at the age of two but escaped without apparent injury. She grew up to be a healthy young girl, but nine years later she contracted leukemia and had to be hospitalized. While in the hospital, she believed in the legend, if you fold a thousand paper cranes, your wish will come true. She ended up folding 1,300 in hopes to recover, but sadly lost her life eight months later. Here are some of the actual paper cranes that she folded made of medicine wrappers and scraps of paper. Here are some paper cranes that President Obama handed out to children during his visit in Hiroshima in 2016. Near the center of the park is a concrete saddle-shaped monument that covers a cenotaph holding names of all the people killed by the bomb. The most impactful part of the Peace Park is easily the A-bomb dome. This building was the closest to the hypocenter that was still partially standing and it was left exactly the way it was after the bomb as a remembrance of the casualties. <laughs> 